Captain America, huh? Damn right. We built this country. Bled for it. I'm not gonna let anybody tell me I can't fight for it. Not after what everybody before me went through. what's up what's up what's up everyone hello 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 how are you all doing out there first things first let me know how i'm looking let me know how i'm sounding all of that good stuff thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of just my opinion reviews moving news roundup show number 94 i really really do appreciate it hopefully you are relaxed on your couch in your bed on your patio porch wherever your hammock who knows got your feet kicked up you relax you got your grocery shopping done you got your laundry done you got all your errands ran all that good stuff and hopefully you are prepared for another great week in 2023 specifically february the first official week in the way because the midweek started last week happy black history month watch as many documentaries as you can you know Get that education, get that information, all that good stuff. But I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, like I said, let me know how I'm sounding and all that good stuff. Um, let's see here. Cleaning the house. I will get you guys out of here in time for The Last of Us, episode four. I'm really looking forward to tonight's episode. I think it's going to be a banger. Last week was good. My only complaint was, you know, it was um, it was a flashback. So, you know, we really wasn't moving forward with the story, but that doesn't mean it wasn't great because it was. And so I'm looking forward to that tonight. I usually will go live for my reaction on Monday, tomorrow, 6 p.m. CST, but I will not be able to do that tomorrow night. I will be unavailable. So I will be going live for The Last of Us episode four on Tuesday, the 7th, February 7th at 6 p.m. CST. Just want to let you guys know, of course, Elliot, I believe, will be going live tonight uh, right after my show for his watch along and after show. So let's make sure we all tune into that. But in the meantime, before we get started, let me go ahead and start shouting all of you lovely, lovely people out. First, we uh, oh, actually we got 34 people watching and let's see how many thumbs up we have right now. As I'm looking to see how many thumbs up we have, here's a, just a little motivation to help you thumbs up the video if you haven't already. I love that little noise at the end. But yeah, we got 41 people watching right now and we have 25 thumbs up. Can we get 40? Can we get 40? I would really appreciate it. And in the building, we have 60 plus reviews. Hey, how you doing? Happy Sunday, J.M. Morris. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. Calo Zane in the building. What's going on? Soto Soto, what's going on? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Best. Oh, I appreciate it. What's shaking? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Naris 21. What up, man? What's going on? Naris 21. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Andrew YB. What's going on? What's going on? Thank you for the thumbs up. Also, I have Kevin Washington in the building. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Mama Avery in the building. Hello, Mom. How are you doing? Thank you so much for being here as well. You're so good to me. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you for being here. Bob Boy Versus in the building. Hello, Brandon, and hello, everyone. What's going on, Bob Boy Versus? Thank you for being here. Excuse me. We also have Joseph W. Johnson Jr., a bunch of J's. J, 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 J. <laughs> What's going on, Joseph? How you doing? From South Carolina. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you for being here. And let's get those thumbs up. Guys, child in the building. Hello, hello. What's going on? Stephen Lawless in the building. What's going on? What's going on? It's me. It's my it's my me and my wife's anniversary tomorrow. Okay. Happy anniversary, Stephen. We always watching you live to celebrate with us. Oh man, that's amazing. Uh, as a part of the family each year, of course, the rest of the year as well. Wow, that is a blessing. Stephen, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you and uh, happy anniversary. And I'm glad that you guys are uh, celebrating that time watching me. That's very flattering. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see here. Let's see. We got William in the building. What's going on? What's up? We got Junior Network in the building. What's going on, Junior? Von Joyner in the building. What's going on? And we have Jasmine W in the building. 
and also thank you for being here jasmine w and also brio david brandon the goat is back ah flex yes thank you brio davis for being here i do appreciate it and also uh jarell what's going on hola what's going on what's going on thank you so much for being here i see that we have 50 people watching right now and that is lovely i love it let's see if we can get that 50 up to 500 the only way that is possible if you guys you thumbs up that video just like uh mr chris sims is doing right now i love it with all of the thumbs up oh i have to show it they youtube be really strict on the comments sometimes i have to approve them before they just pop up or whatever but yeah here you go do, let's do what chris is doing right now thank you chris thank you chris but now let's go ahead and get started guys let's go ahead and get started so we can get to the oh wait before we get started you guys are holding me up but it's a good thing i love it thank you so much oh archie two dollar super chat to start things off today thank you so much you're keeping the lights on over here i really do appreciate what it what a money reside what a money reside what a money reside what a money reside okay i'll tell you about yes are you looking forward to ant-man 3 this month i really am i really am i am going to be seeing that pretty soon and as soon as i see it i will be giving you guys a reaction and i can't wait i'm really looking forward to jonathan majors as he who remains as kang and we are representing cad kang gang over here hashtag all that but thank you oh archie for the two dollar super chat i really really do appreciate it thank you thank you thank you but ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Moving News Roundup show number 94. Man, we are six away from 100. I just think that is freaking amazing. If you guys didn't know, I'm coming to you live right now on YouTube at youtube.com slash just my opinion reviews, twitch.com slash just my opinion reviews. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can. My handle is on the screen at just my opinion 84. Again, that's Instagram and Twitter. I do not have my Facebook yet, but I'm still working on it. I'm not giving up. I am going to get a breakthrough. If you are also interested in an audio only version of today's show, look at the screen right now. There is a link to all of that in the description box below. You can catch that at buzzsprout.com and also on all of these platforms that you see right here. We got Apple Podcasts, Spotify google podcast overcast our heart radio you guys can see the screen and also guys i am on soundcloud as well if you just look at the screen i upload all of my live videos i got episode 93 right there if you want an audio only version and also guys if you're curious about eddie murphy and um his latest film on netflix with jonah hill neil long lauren london and a number of great other actors and actresses julia lewis dreyfus Check out my You People review. It's mixed reviews right now. I happen to like it. Some people didn't. Some people did. Some people are in the middle. What did you think? You can watch it if you have a Netflix account. But I think you should check that out too. But yes, guys, let's go ahead and get started. But of course, before I do, I may need some help. Ron Burgundy, please come through, sir. Please come through. If I'm going to do this, I'll need my news team at my side. News team, assemble! <laughs> News team, assemble! Assemble! Thank you, Ryan. He's, you can always count on Ryan. I, I really do appreciate it. And also, to all my lovely, lovely, lovely moderators out there, please, please, please. Keep on back! Keep on back! Keep on back! Keep on back! Ah! Ah! Protect the chat as best as you can. Well, guys, let's go ahead and move on to this first topic of the day. And yes, I have been slobbering at the mouth. That kind of sounds gross. I didn't think before I said that about Avatar The Way of Water and how well it is doing at the box office. You see the banner, you see the background, but guys, it's not only Avatar that's doing great at the box office, it is no longer number one. After, I don't know, eight, nine weeks, this is coming from Variety, topic number one, Knock at the Cabin knocks down Avatar 2 at the box office. 
Aiden for Brady touches down in second place, putting Avatar in third. Da, 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 da. M. Night Shyamalan's horror film, and that's arguable, Knock at the Cabin, excuse me, collected 14.2 million in its opening weekend, enough to top box office charts and dethrone Avatar The Way of Water after spending seven weeks at number one. The creepy thriller from Universal just barely beat the weekend's other new wild releases. 80 for Brady, which scored in second place with 12.5 million from 2912 North American theaters. It's a major win for Paramount, which backed the sports comedy starring Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Rita Moreno, and Sally Field because older audiences have been reluctant to go to the theater in pandemic times. Now, I have not seen the film. Critics are holding that at a 64%. So you guys in the comment section, let me know if you have seen it. I know one take big dog. I've seen it. Of course, I we follow each other on Instagram and I saw him. Uh, I saw his ticket stub, uh, but I don't know if he actually liked the film or not. But if you've seen it, you know, let me know. Let me know. However, going through this, uh, though, Knock at the Cabin finally toppled Avatar 2. From the top spot, the film ranks as the lowest opening weekend for Shyamalan's career. That distinction previously belonged to 2021's O, a film that I did like, guys. I, I actually like that one, which kicked off to 16.8 million as the Omicron variant of COVID was surging and eventually climbed to 48 million domestically, 90 million globally. Uh, Knock at the Cabin added 7 million at the international box office, uh, had a C minus cinema score, is rated R. Totally globally right now, it is at 21.2 million. So 69% right now on the Rotten Tomatoes and a 64% from the audience score. 220 reviews from the critics, over 500 from the audience. Now, I did not get a chance to see this um, early, you know, which is fine. Uh, I live in, I reside in Dallas, Texas, and we had some winter storms. We had some snow, ice, and water. And when you mix those all up together, it is not good where I live. They just shut the city down, and so they canceled the screenings. The whole mall was canceled. Everything was closed. So I didn't get to see it. However, I did see the film today, this morning. First thing I woke up, uh, well, not the first thing. I, it was a 10, 25 a.m. showing. Uh, I love that it was maybe three or four people in the theater. I, I love those morning, those Sunday morning, Monday morning, uh, if you're off on a Monday. Uh, the theater is just empty. It is. So, yeah, it was empty. I like the movie. I thought it was pretty good. I wanted a little bit more in the ending. You know, it really just didn't pay off. You know, it wasn't misleading. Excuse me. It wasn't misleading or anything. I just wanted a little bit more. But this is one of the better films from M. Night Shyamalan, if I had to be honest with you. The man has a lot of films under his belt on his filmography. And some of them are good. Some of them are crap. And um, I, I would say you can put this one in the good section, not the crap section, you know. So uh, shout out to M. Night there. You know, a lot of people do give him, uh, you know, crap when, when he deserves it. Because one time he did get kind of uh, kind of cocky. Of course, this is what the gentleman looks like right here. And if we scroll down just to look at, you know, he's what, 18 films, you know, knock the cabin. Oh, I didn't see this. No, that's a. A TV series. Oh, it was good. Glass was straight. Split was good. I liked the visit. I didn't see After Earth, but I heard it was trash. I liked the happening except for the ending last airbender. But yeah, anyway. So M Night is doing well. Uh the movie was received decent. And you know, it's number one at the box office. But let's talk about this avatar right here. The way of water. Yes. Guys, it made internationally 1.5 billion alone. 636 domestically 2.174 worldwide will it reach 2.2 of course it will i would be shocked if it did not and i think it will now if we're going to look at avatar the way of water comparing to other movies and that's uh oh i'm sorry that's knock at the cabin so let me go back to that 21 mil actually real quick let me let me see what let me try to see what the uh the production budget for knock at the cabin was knock at the cabin i always think i'm prepared and have every slide up but there's always just one or two that i forget production budget oh we're gonna see about that right here 20 million so guys you know what i always say the rule of three if it costs 20 million to make 
It needs to make at least 60 million or three times that. In this case, it'll be 60 million worldwide for the theaters to feel like, okay, we got a respectable profit. We didn't waste our time. You know, we made a little bit of money, but we also didn't waste our time either. Cause I mean, um, let me, um, yes. Um, Hold on, y'all. Uh, what am I talking about? I sent, I sent this to the wrong person. Let me sure. Sorry about that. So, a rule of three, 60 million. Yeah, we made some money, you know, because you can, if you make a dollar, a hundred dollars, okay, you made a hundred dollar profit, but that you know, kind of wasted your time. So, right now, uh, it is at 21 million worldwide, and we're going to see. I have, I, I, I think it'll be okay uh, because, I mean, if the, if the movie sucked, but, uh, you know, then no, but, it, it was received well. I saw Elliot's review earlier with Movie Files. Shout out to him. I think he, well, I'll let you watch his review to get the rating at the end, but he favored the film. Okay. So that's that. Now, going back to Avatar, this is worldwide, all time, top lifetime grosses. Of course, we got Titanic, not Titanic, Avatar, the first one, 2.9, Avengers. Now, look, man, Avatar is still number four. But it's literally 20 million away from passing Titanic. Is it going to pass Titanic? Yes. It really doesn't matter because both of these are uh, James Cameron's films, but still, you know. And it also doesn't matter, too, because, you know, Titanic is going to get a, is getting a re-release in like a week or two for the 25-year anniversary. But it's still going to get two point, at least 2.2. I doubt it will uh, beat uh, reach Endgame. That's just... I don't see that happening. Maybe next year when they re-release it before Avatar 3, maybe. However, I was talking to Elliot on this channel earlier this week. I think since Avatar The Way of Water, Avatar 2 has been nominated, um, you know, like for the Academy for, um, not I don't think, not Best Picture, but a number of awards. Um, I think that'll give it a boost to like hey avatar is nominated for this 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 oh my god it's it's, it's been nominated let's go see it it must be good because they're talking about it on television so when was that march 12th and i will be going live the following monday march 13th to cover all the oscar stuff so i already set up on my channel so i think it'll get a, a boost there i think it'll end up making 2.5 so right now it's 20 million away um 26 million away from 2.2 but 20 million away from passing titanic I think it'll end up, you know, it's going to go number three, then go number four again, because, I, you know, unless people just don't go see Titanic, but I doubt that. However, domestically, and this and, and this matters, too, because, I mean, you want the domestic to be the highest because the studio gets the higher return. But now it is number 10 domestic. And Star Wars The Force Awakens almost uh, hit a bill in the United States. Endgame, A58, No Way Home. No way home. That's domestic. That's that's a hell of a lot. That was, guy, remember this was during the pandemic. So imagine what this would have did in normal times. Of course, the first Avatar seven eighty five is not going to catch that. Now, also, y'all peep this, y'all. So Avatar: The Way of Water, number ten now domestically is considered a. We're in twenty twenty three now, but it is considered a twenty twenty two release because that's when it was released. However, Top Gun Maverick that was a twenty two twenty twenty two release. That's a seven eighteen million. So that's another recent film right there. So I don't know if it's going to catch that. Was that like another ninety million dollars, eighty seven something million dollars? Uh, I think it has a realistic chance domestically. I think it would definitely pass Titanic domestically. It may pass Avengers: Infinity War. I don't know. I doubt it'll catch up to these two. These will be miracles to me, but we'll see. Have you seen Avatar 2 yet? If you haven't, uh, it's well worth it, in my humble opinion. And uh, I see Larry is in the in the building. What's going on, Larry? And uh, yes to your DM that you just sent me. Yes, yes, yes. 
Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, to answer your question. Uh, let's see. What, what y'all saying about this? Antoine Films is saying, ha, 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 ha. Yes. Kenny, Kenny Pierce. What's up, Kenny? Good to see your face, too. Protect the chat. Shout out to M. Knight. Yes. What's up, Chill Spot? A.K. New Year's Saint Spouse. Happy Sunday. I'm late. Thor cooked a surprise dinner to make up for the thunderstorms last week. What's up, at Chill Spot? What's up, Young Nah? Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, thank you for the the um, comment. Pure. I don't know. What you, I was trying to read the whole thing. Puerto Rican. It cow track though. Thank you. Appreciate it. What's up, Shanny D? What it do? Avatar two sucks. No, it doesn't. What's going on, Natalie? How you doing? I uh, rather watch this and have Twitter updates me on Grammys. Man, hold up. Man, man, man. Okay, I ain't mad at you. Dan C, what's going on? Wait, the last job I made over 600 domestic, did it? It did. I won't even pay attention to that because I don't really care about these Star Wars movies right now. But apparently it did. You're right. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah, Avatar is so overrated. Oh, no. <laughs> and... Um, I have to stream Avatar 2. I, I can't be in the movies for two hours. I, I hear you. Even that's not it's not two hours, though. It is three hours. Three hours. So you guys let me know what you think about that. Avatar is killing it at the box office still. There's some posters and stuff like that. Um, and also your M Night Shyamalan movie is doing well too. All right. So now let's move on to the second topic of the day. And I'm really excited about this. I couldn't be happier. I think this is absolutely perfect. Um, to be honest with you, it was uh, I've been talking about this topic for at least this is the third week in a row, third week in a row um, that I'm going to be talking about this right here. And uh, I'm I'm a happy camper, to be honest with you. Uh, but you see the you see the background. One second. OK, you see the background, you see the banner. It was announced a uh, week before last that Anton Fuqua is going to be directing a Michael Jackson biopic movie. That's the first good thing. The second good thing is it's also going to um, involve the creators, the producers of Bohemian Rhapsody. that did that biopic a couple of years ago. That movie was fantastic. I was I was jamming in the theater just like, man, I was. Yeah, that's the second good thing. The third good thing is that the estate is going to be involved with a biopic. So they have the blessings of the estate. I had Larry on and initially he was a bit concerned because of, well, hey, man, if the estate is involved, are they going to sugarcoat the story or are they going to be honest and go over the good things about Michael Jackson's life and also the alleged bad things with, you know, all the allegations he he um that that were you know brought up to the public um i think the article said that you know they are going to include that now how deep they're going to go i don't know but i'm glad myself that they're going to address that i don't want anything to be sugar-coated with anybody whitney houston michael jackson whoever so that's the third good thing now the fourth good thing guys is we have some casting and i i could not be i i this is perfect in my opinion but we're gonna see we're going to see how do y'all feel about this, too. This is topic number two coming from Deadline. Michael Jackson nephew, Javar Jackson, to play King of Pop in Anton Fuqua's directed biopic. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Deadline uh, had, what the hell am I doing? I'm, I was trying to maximize my screen. I was doing the wrong screen. Uh, Deadline has the exclusive. Michael Jackson will be played by the late icons. Oh, he's 26? 26 year old nephew Javar Jackson in the Anton Fuqua Doristic Film biopic for Lionsgate. Fuqua just posted a confirmation on Instagram. The singer and songwriter is the son of Jermaine Jackson, who is the brother and uh, of Michael and member of the Jackson Five. 
Now, Jackson 5, oh my gosh. I just need this movie to y'all y'all remember back in the day, I think it came out in 93. How, how wait, wait. I was born in 84. So I think it came out in 92, actually. Uh the Jackson 5 American Dream. I, I let me I think that's when it came out. It, and it was a two-parter. Jackson 5. American Dream. I it needs to be as good as this. Okay, it's taking me too long to find it. But y'all remember y'all know what I'm talking about. That that biopic right there, Jackson Five American Dream that came on TV. It was a two part, it was like a four hour movie. It needs to. I, I hope it's as good as that. I, I do. But uh, let's see here. Uh, Javar has been singing and dancing since age twelve. Cool, and has showcased himself singing tunes from Sam Cooke to Marvin Gaye, along with the originals. His deadline revealed last week the Emancipation Helmer. That's uh, Antoine Fuqua. Uh, Helmer signed on next to direct Michael which has script by John Logan. The film being produced by Graham King, who turned the Freddie Mercury clean story into the blockbuster Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, J GK Films were produced alongside the co-executors of Jackson State, John Branca and John McClain. Yes, man. Yes, yes, yes. And so, um, okay. I don't know. Let me, um, There, there's your right there. Who is that? LaToya? Let's see here. Let's see here. But uh, I'm I'm, ha I'm happy about this right here, y'all. I, I really am. This is uh this is dope as hell to me. Um, like I, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier. I, I could not be happier. Yeah, like what do y'all think about this? What do y'all think about the casting? Um, let me know because I'm very real curious. Finally, a worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary. Well, all right, guys. Y'all know what that means. I got a guest backstage. It's been a minute since I've had them on, but I will say that I'm super duper excited. Coming on right now, my brother from another mother, the leader of the legendary race, the Sands. Yes, it's that man right there, also also known as the king of anime, Wante Big Dog, the rightful ruler of the ultimate warrior race. <laughs> What's going on, man? How you doing, sir? How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. How you doing tonight, bro? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. You're looking pretty cool with the shades on. I love it, sir. I love yeah, it. Yeah, man. I, I have a hat today, so I'll put on my shades. You know, I already. I love it, man. But thank you for being here, Wante Big Dog. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Y'all, if you did not know, this is my homie right here. His information is on the screen if you want to follow him on social media. Information is also in the description box below and on my channel tab as well. Right there, number two. Been rocking with one take for a minute now. Yes, but sir. yes, sir, man. We uh we we I know you're excited for the news we're gonna be talking about later, but right now you may be even excited about this right here, man. How you feeling about this uh news of Javar Jackson, Jermaine Jackson's son? Michael Jackson's nephew to take on the, the titular role in the Michael Jackson biopic. Uh, well, I, I just you know what I'm saying. I just hopped on, so I don't really know too much about anything other than him gonna be playing Mike. Uh, I personally have really fell in love with a lot of biopics over the past. Uh, I would say I would probably say it's like the last six years I've really been in the biopic. So if he can sing and he can you know embody that. You know the presence, uh, the charisma that Mike had. I'm, I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've been into a lot of biopics lately, so uh, I'm looking forward to see what he can bring to the road. Hell yeah, man! I, I am too. I am too. Have you seen? Um, have you seen? I was just talking about it before I brought you on the the Jackson Five American Dream TV movie series that came out. Like, oh my god, you ain't seen that, bro? No, I've not seen that. Oh be, man, that's up there, man. That's that's up there, like I'm sure you you've seen the Temptations movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It's all it's 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 right in there. That okay. five heartbeats. It's on that level. Okay. It's on that level. Now the Temptations may be slightly better. That's that's debatable. Y'all let me know in the chat. Yeah, man, we got to get you on that, bro. That came out when I was uh in like the third grade. 
You know, I remember my mom set the little table up in front of the TV. We had a little McDonald's, French fries, and nuggets. <laughs> Even I think it was a Wednesday, man. I, that that is a core memory uh, that I would never. It was a day of the week and everything. Bro, it was. Bro, that's bro. Y'all let them know in the chat. Let them know how good America. Oh my God, it's. I don't. I don't want to take too much time, but man, it's. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's. It's. It's amazing. Thank you, Kane Keith. Hold on, I, I gotta have somebody in the chat that that can represent. Tell me, oh yeah, one take it. You gotta see it, bro. You gotta see it. Um, now I don't. I don't. I haven't watched this. I don't know what this is right here. Can you hear that? <laughs> no. Okay, I can fix it. Hold on. Stop sharing. We're gonna present. Share Chrome. Okay, I'm sure you can hear it now. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what this is. I think this is a Javar Jackson singing. You can hear that? Yeah. I just wanted to give out a little taste because I don't want to yeah, get a yeah. right claim, but I don't know what 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 you think about that. You think he got the it's, moves? You think he got yeah, the? It's straight, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's straight. You yeah. know what I mean? I gotta yeah. see. You know, you gotta see like the, the full thing, though. You know what I'm I, saying? I got you. I got you. So there's a link to that in the description. Got uh, in the description box. I can't even talk. This description box below. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, uh, the full article, and of course, it will have the link uh to that video um that i just was playing for you guys but he doesn't have anything on this filmography bro this is the first thing but you know he'd be singing and dancing as we just saw so uh he looks the part you know look like he can dance a little bit so we're gonna see man we yeah. gonna see. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna see we're gonna see we're gonna see well, hopefully it turns out great you know what I'm saying? yeah 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 uh, ho hopefully hopefully but yeah guys again if you're uh if you're watching this via live or in the replay, there. This is from Deadline. There's a link in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. And let me know because I'm dying to know. Oh, right. hold on, B, let, me, let me just say something. I can't view the chat from you or the audience right now because when I clicked on the link, I clicked on it uh, from my Gmail instead of send, taking it to the browser and like copy mm. and paste. So I can't see any of the chat. You know what I'm saying? I can't okay. see that. I'll just let you know that. Okay, cool, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Thanks for letting me know. Thanks for letting me know. We're still going to uh, work it out, though. But yeah, uh, the news wasn't that heavy. And so, I mean, it was some other stuff, but I don't, I'm not really into covering news topics that I just don't give a crap about, you know? So uh, I didn't want to do that. But we're going to move. We got two topics left. Uh, and so let's go ahead and move on to the third one right now. I know one take you're a big fan of these people right here. You're a fan of uh, Mr. Will Smith. Mm. Uh, you know, <laughs> ride or die, you know. Yes, sir. It's pretty much nothing that this man yes. can do. And I, I feel you. I'm not too. I'm, I'm team Will Smith all the way. But uh, yes, topic sir. number three, and I'm pretty sure you already heard. This is coming from the Hollywood Reporter. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence set to routine for fourth Bad Boys movie. The long gestated film is in pre-production at Sony Pictures with Adele L. Arby and Bilal Falah returning to direct. And yeah, and so it's official, man. They're reuniting for a fourth film. Uh, Sony Pictures has confirmed the Untitled Bad Boy sequel in its early productions. You know, the, uh, I named the gentleman. Now remember, they did Bad Boys for Life, the third one. Mm -hmm. and, but, and they also did the Batgirl movie that was canceled over DC. Yeah. So that, that that's interesting right there. Uh, but in the article, it says the fourth film in the Buddy Cop movie series began in 95. Uh, but yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all know what's up. So they 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 mm -hmm. confirming that right now. How, how do you feel about that so far? Bro, I was so happy. Like I actually did a, a reaction on uh like my my movie channel on TikTok. Because like somebody attacked me, like, hey, you probably want to react to this. And so I started watching it, and then the moment he, the way he like, I give y'all a hint, and then it was the bad boy song. I was like, oh yeah, I, I, I'm pumped because I've been waiting for this to like move forward. But you know, after you know the stuff at the Oscars and everything, a lot of his stuff had got like shelved for a little minute, but it's slowly starting to roll around and get things back in motion. And 
all the, like, the weirdest thing to me is going to be what they're going to title it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you, 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 you use up the bad boys for life title with three. And the reason I think they did that, because I think they thought, hey, we're going to just ride off in the sunset with this one. But with the reception of that one, it was like, oh, I guess we can actually make a four. But now we already used the four life and the title. So I, I, I'm wondering what they're going to title it. I wonder what they're going to title it. So I think they're already commenting on that as well. Here comes a new challenger. What? We got another challenger coming to the stage. I lived my entire life waiting for this moment. Indingu and Jadaka. Unyana Cotton Jobu. I found my daddy with panther claws in his chest. Nah, I'm your king. Come on. Yes, it is the wonderful <laughs> ruler of Wakanda. Mr. Killmonger, aka Larry, what's your dad feel like? <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you doing? How are you doing, sir? Oh man, I'm good, man. It's good to see one tech back up in the building, what's going man. Oh man, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice little trio we got right here. I was uh you know? I, I think I I think I was telling you, Larry, excuse me, last week that uh one of my favorite lies was when it was us three and we were talking about Ma, the sequel Ma or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 silly premise or whatever. But anyway, Larry, thank you for being here, man. I do appreciate it. You know, you know, it's funny. I was watching that intro. I love that intro. You well, that every time, man. I just love it. But I started watching uh, last night. We stood. My wife and I started watching uh, Wakanda Forever. She hasn't seen it, and uh, just as a little indicator, first of all, she fell asleep on. It. I think we only got through about thirty minutes, and she fell asleep on it, which says everything. But also, I was just thinking. I was like. You know, Killmonger pretty much took down the entire Dora Milaje by himself, single-handedly. It's true. I think he probably would have been a far better protector for Wakanda than anybody else because he would have whooped <laughs> Namor and that whole underwater crew by himself. He would have right. like, flicked him off the shoulder, been like, son, don't uh, mess with me. He never going to let it go. I, know, I, know. I love it. I love it, though. I love it. I love but, it. of course, if, if you did not know, if you want to follow Larry – uh, on social media, his handles on the screen. Information is in the description. He's on my channel tab as well. Uh, Larry, how are you feeling about this article from Hollywood Reporter that Bad Boys 4 is confirmed? Are you excited? What did you think about the third film? Like, one take Big Dog Ask. Um, you know, what do you think they're going to title it? Also, I want to throw into the mix, um, you know, just the first film made 144 uh, worldwide, $19 million budget. Second film, uh, $130 million budget. 273 not as well uh but the stir film did holly well 90 million dollars worldwide i mean 90 million budget uh 426 worldwide so that definitely made money and yeah. this is what it looks like on rt but how you feeling about a fourth film there how you feeling well I'll, I'll say this i i mean i hope they get i hope they get uh martin lawrence a personal trainer because a buddy of mine yeah. sent me a photo of him yesterday with him and uh tisha campbell somewhere and he looked like he had he, he looked like he had eaten Mike Lowry. He just looked like, man. Oh, my gosh. Dude looked like he had just gotten blown all the way up. But personally, I think it's probably good. I mean, it's going to be good for Martin Lawrence financially, obviously. But I think it'll be probably good for Will Smith uh, for his career. But th the only downside is is his character is a, is a bit arrogant and and – not so much a philander anymore, but he's but I'm not sure that his character as it has been written is probably the best for his, you know, for his image as he's trying to rehabilitate it. But I think if they write it right, they can do it. They can it could probably do him some justice personally as far as is getting over the hump with that slap. So okay. Now and they should probably throw a joke in there, maybe where he gets slapped a few times. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that actually is a good idea. I, I, I like that. I like that. Uh, one thing, I already know the answer is yes from you, but Larry, is this something that can motivate you to go to the back to the theaters uh, when it comes out? I'll go. Opening I'll weekend. Go. Opening weekend, too. I'll go. Well, it, it might be opening weekend at like 10 a.m. when everybody, on like a Monday when everyone's at school. Okay. But, <laughs> but um, if they can get Chris Rock in the movie <laughs> and Chris amazing. Rock comes out from somewhere and slaps the crap out of him, then I'll go see it. That would be hilarious. That, you know would, be, but, that okay. would absolutely I, I like be hilarious. That. I got you there, but they wouldn't get out of the way in the trailer. 
That'll no, they would easy. not. They would not. They, I would, they would keep that for I a could, movie. I can tell you right now, they would not give that away in the trailer, but there's no way in Sam Hill, Billy, that that is not getting leaked. If that if that happened, uh, boy, as <laughs> yeah, soon that. as you had picture lock and we knew that was going to be in the film, people would be all over it. Yeah, you had to have a close set. Um, man, you would... <laughs> You had, no. oh, you can only have one editor on that scene alone. Yeah, you have a break man like hidden everything. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But, that, but tell me that, that wouldn't be fire, though. Right, Larry, that's actually one of the best ideas I've heard uh, you say. <laughs> on the show. That's, that's at least top five, top five, top three. Right there. So I, I, I got to give it to you. So uh, that's what's up right there. It seems like all three of us are um, in excitement for this film. Uh, I am. Oh, excuse me. I don't know what they're going to do about the title. They did kind of blow their load too early, mm. you know, with the four life because they could have did the, you know, the number four thing. Uh, but, you know, hey, I mean, I'm pretty sure they can still come up with something uh, creative. Uh, but, uh, in, in, you know, it'd be fun with that, though, too, if they did, because I know everybody loves Miami and they love the whole thing. But it could be fun if they moved them to a different city. You know, if they mm. if they reviewed them and they moved it to a different like. I wouldn't mind seeing them running around through New Orleans. That would be fun. I'm not saying it can't work, but you know. yeah, we 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 put a ratchet on him when he's on him, and I don't know if everybody read for that. They might. They have a lot of film credits out there, though. I don't, I don't, I don't even know if Mike Lauer. I don't even know if Mike Lauer read for that. Louisiana, <laughs> you know, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know if he read for that. <laughs> Could you imagine the scene though with Martin Lawrence going into a bounce club, and he's up there? <laughs> No, nah, he's up there trying to investigate something. The next thing you know, he's got five girls bouncing on him. Bro, nah, he ain't no, he ain't no. <laughs> those are your, uh, those are your final thoughts. Yeah, those are my final thoughts, man. All right, guys. Well, again, if you're watching this via live on the replay, there's a link down to this article in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. And we are making good time, guys. And I promised you I will get you out of here. Uh, by the time Last of Us starts. So let's go ahead and move on to the final topic of the day. The main topic of the day. One of the main reasons our boy One Take Big Dog wanted to resurrect today on this show. <laughs> I'm so happy. And I mean, I, I, I know, I, we all like comic books here. You know what I'm saying? And and I, I and I know One Take. You you like you you like Marvel. It's cool. Yeah. But you know your your home is DC. Yeah, your absolutely. Home is DC. And I, I, I don't blame you. And I think Larry is leaning more. Well, I don't know. I know you don't really like you. I mean, you complain about both of them, rightfully so. Rightfully so. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not, I'm not I mad like at them you. both. Yeah, I like them both, both, but you like them both. So I think it was Tuesday. This came out coming from the Hollywood Reporter. DC Slate unveiled new Batman, Supergirl movies, and a Green Lantern TV show, and more from James Gunn and Peter Safran. Heard that go right here. I already have the video ready to play. I'm going to hit it now, and we're just going to break this down bit by bit. Let's go. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of, you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is outside of that, like, Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Now, Peter. Ooh, <laughs> throwing people under the bus. You're, you're muted, B. Oh, my fault. I want to ask y'all this right here, first of all. Talking about this elsewhere. So, this is talking about, uh, he just said the, the uh, Batman, um, what, what's the dude's name, the, the actor? It's slipping my mind right now. Robert Patterson? Yeah, Robert Patterson. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's 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 elsewhere. Also, the Joker is, is elsewhere as well. How do y'all feel if the Snyderverse was part of the S, uh, elsewhere too? You think that could work? Because I, I think that would make everybody happy. I, mm. it, can't, it can't work. It, it can't work? Even if it it's elsewhere? Be. No, no, no. Those two entities can't exist. Just based on what DC fans is, because I kind of feel like once you do that, it it becomes less about what the product is and more about picking a side. You know what I'm saying? Let's go mm -hmm. see the let's go see the Snyderverse stuff, and this right here, we ain't go, we, we ain't gonna watch none of this. So hey, 
this right here might fail. We want this to fail. This won't, we want this side over here to fail. The James Gunn side to fail, so they can possibly bring the Snyderverse to be the one main entity. I'm, I'm telling you, like I, it's crazy just talking to like fans of diehard Snyderverse fans, bro. They, they don't see another way other than that, and I kind of feel like that's ran its course. It was messy. We needed this just, we needed this full, you know, reboot type deal, you know what I'm saying, to get everything just going in like a certain direction, everybody on the same page. That that just wouldn't work. Especially even with the, those actors and all the stuff that they had to deal, it, it just doesn't work. Mm, okay, Larry, let me ask the same question. If, I mean, you're going to have the new DC Universe ran by James Gunn and Peter Saffron, but you already got the else world. Do you think that the the Snyderverse could exist in the else world, or you would want to? Take? I I think that the fact that they have an else world just is telling us that this whole thing is going to fail all over oh, again. Wow. I I I honestly believe they need to kill off the else world, and they need to unify everything under one umbrella, and that's it. And otherwise, it becomes too confusing. It's too fragmented. People start, you know, the resources are getting split up. Just have one world and that's it. Kill off the other the else world. You can bring people in from the else world into the main world if you want to, but it's got to go. It just has to go. Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. Let's keep going. Her and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. And then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm gonna tell you about now. So, Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. The next pro Larry, how you feeling about that right there? These uh, Creature Commandos, I don't know who they are. A seven episode animated series. He said he wrote them all. Does uh, this excite you, man? Uh, how, how, how you feeling about it? Whoa, that makes me really nervous. I'll be honest with you, man, because DC has always had really good animated stuff. And I'm afraid if you start bringing in the people that handle the, the live action stuff into animation, that they're just going to screw it all up, that they're just going to monkey wrench that whole thing up. And I don't want to see that happen. I mean, the animation stuff has been sort of their DC saving grace. And uh, but I mean, I do like the idea if that. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. It seems to me like on one end they're trying to keep everything together, but then this whole else universe, else universe or whatever they're calling it, else world, I, that's what they should do. They should have it where you have all of you have all of this that that is the live action that goes over to animation, goes back to live action. That should be the same, and they should do the same thing. I know some people say it'd be copy and Marvel, but they should do the same thing in some respects where you have a series that leads into more of the movies like they're doing with Peacemaker. Do more of that. Just get well, rid of all the clarify, other crap. To clarify, uh, this is going to be part of the new main universe. I think the only thing right now that is considered Elseworld is the Robert Pattinson Batman and the, get rid of it. And the Joker. That's, that's what about the only thing. What think, about the Flash series? There's no Flash no, that's, series. That's, that's, that's done? Not. Yeah, all, all the they, they don't, only show they have left is Superman and Lois. The, every other DC show is finishing up. The Flash is finishing up. Star Girl, Doom Patrol, type. All those shows are. Yeah, that's, oh, this that's is the last season of Doom Patrol too. Yeah, everything. Yeah. All that is okay. done. All that's done. All right, cool. Well, get them all. Get all that done, and then just bring them all under one umbrella. I I like the idea of this because I like DC animated stuff. I feel like 
there's some stuff that you can do in animation that you can't do with live action. And I and I'm there for it. I just hope they don't screw it up. Uh, one sec, where are you at? Yeah. Uh, first of all, with the the first the four films that are already like in the bucket, I like how he explained exactly how those films roll. I'm still kind of uh, wondering about how the Aquaman thing is gonna be handled though, because that comes last after Blue Beetle and everything. So I, I, I'm wondering, I, I kind of want to clarify exactly how he said that goes into like this current DCU. But as far as like animation into live action, I love that idea because it's not something I think we've seen before. Of course, we have like, even in Marvel, you have a couple of uh, actors come back and voice the characters that they played in the live action series. But these seems like it's kind of, you know, the, the people who you hear and the voice of these characters, those are the people you're going to see once you see them on live action. I really like that idea. And I, I personally don't know literally anything about these characters whatsoever. But that's one thing James Gunn has been really good at doing. He's been really good at taking, like, you know, lesser known characters and, and put them in the forefront and having people fall in love with them. And so I don't expect anything different from this, considering one, it's DC animation, and two, it's James Gunn. That's what he's been able to do. So, yeah. It, all of it works for me. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, if if this was just announced uh, without James Gunn, I wouldn't care because I don't know anything about these characters. They don't interest me. Out of I like his rebooted uh, Suicide Squad. Weasel was an interesting character. I think this is the same thing right here. He scares me. Mm -hmm. uh, but the only reason I'm interested in this is because I know James Gunn is writing it. He's like he said it right here. He wrote uh, the seven episodes, and so if he's gonna put the same energy that he put into Peacemaker. And the new Suicide Squad, I, I'm down for that right there. So I, I can definitely take that. Uh, I missed a couple of Super Chats, though. Let me address that real quick. Uh, from Dane C, thank you so much. Yes! Yes! Michael Jackson by Opic, the return of Jafar. <laughs> <laughs> That is funny. You guys, be careful talking about Michael Jackson. Brandon and, and some of the some of the uh, subscribers yes. will come for you. Yes, <laughs> we, we sure will. Not, not for my Michael, but thank you, Dane. I appreciate it. And we also we also have Natalie uh, with the four ninety nine. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. Okay, I'll tell you before. You Natalie, uh, Re uh, uh, Larry should run a no frills dating service. <laughs> oh my god, because one thing he's gonna do is speak his mind. What I want to say, keep going, <laughs> keep going to the roundup already. <laughs> Natalie, I love it. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, they will definitely get the truth. Uh, if that if that happens, <laughs> now. but thank you, uh, thank you, Natalie, and thank you, Larry. I <laughs> appreciate it. Let's keep on going. Next up is Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. Viola Davis is going to team up with members of Team Peacemaker. And this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. Okay, next up is the... Now, when I first heard this, I was like, really? They're going to be doing this? But then I thought about it, and I'm like, this is Viola Davis. You know what I'm saying? She, she's the and the, the best in the game, and so um, I wonder who's gonna write it and I was and direct it and all that. But it's Viola Davis, and but my only hesitation is we all know Waller is a despicable character. She's nasty. Mm -hmm. She's unethical. She's not a role model to say the least. Like, are they gonna try to? Because look what they did with uh. And one second, I'm coming to you first. Peacemaker was a bad guy. Yeah. But in the show, they made us love them. Mm -hmm. Are they going to do that the same way with Waller? Or are they going to have her sinister and evil? Or like, well, she has a troubled backstory, which caused her to yada, yada, yada. How do you feel about that, man? How how, how you feeling about this whole thing? Uh, one take, Waller. Uh, the, I think the, as far as everything that was announced, this is probably maybe top top two or three for me. Okay, because oh, I love Viola yeah. Davis is uh, uh, Amanda Waller, and she's been great every single time. And the people that they have doing it, I like their work as well. Uh, I hope they don't go that route because I want to see Amanda Waller be the terrible person that she is. I, I personally think that uh, Viola Davis is going to win an Emmy for this. I'm calling it right now. She's going to win an Emmy for her role as Amanda Waller and whatever, whenever the TV series comes out. <laughs> I think what I think they're going to do 
though, instead of trying to, like, you know, make her a more sympathetic character, you're just going to put some characters around her. You know, that's all you have to do. She can still be as te- she can still be terrible as, as that. One. You just put sympathetic characters around her. That's how that works. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, Larry, where you at on this? If you, you know, it's funny when you when you mention this. I was just about to say that I want to see a standalone series about Amanda Waller. I want I want like I want to see her backstory, her origin story. And I'm hoping I'm hoping I know it's funny. I know you say you hope that they don't that they don't show her like a softer, gentler side that that sort of humanizes her. I want exactly that. Really? I want to know what turned this woman into basically a sadistic no, sociopathic killer. And I, in fact, I would love it if they called it like Amanda Waller first kill. And it was like the origin story <laughs> leading up to her first kill. Cause this woman is sadistic, yeah. you know? Did, I mean, did, you think about does that. She she kill in the comics. Like does she do, does she kill in the comics? I don't know. I don't yes. know. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, listen, she is like, bro. The re- and the reason I'm saying, I don't want to see, it's like the Joker, bro. Like, okay. like some people, you just like that person is just that's a bad person. You She's know? a sociopath. That's a bad person, you know. And that's, okay, that's my, okay. that's a, a better wall. Okay, all right. I love it. I love the energy. So uh, I'm looking for it. I also want to see a standalone movie with Bane too. I want to see hey, his origin story. Well, we we only got one part of this today. So uh hold on. I like the Waller from the Batman Beyond. She did the. I'm gonna show you. They they blocking comments because he said the S word, but. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. One, the true <laughs> beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. And Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay, the next thing is. All right, Superman Legacy. It says that the movie featuring the Man of Steel, the gun is riding and made direct, although no commitments on that have been made. While the two previous titles are meant to be. Apper, I don't know what that is in Saffron's words. Superman is the true kickoff to the duo's DC plans. It's not an origin story, Saffron said. It focuses on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. He is the embodiment of truth, justice, and the American way. He is kindness. Uh, he is kindness in a word that thinks that kindness is old fashioned. A release date of July 11, 2025 has been penciled in. Larry, how are you feeling about Superman and Legacy? Man, I feel like when they give that description, like trying to balance his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing, I feel like they ought to find a black dude that's passable to play that character. I feel like that just speaks to the to the black American experience. You're, you're dealing with your African heritage, dealing, you know, but your your American upbringing. I feel like that would just be there would be all kinds of fun stuff to play with that in there. So I don't know, maybe find Wentworth Miller or something. But um, it's it seems like it would be cool. I don't know, man. I, I I you know how I feel when it comes to DC movies. I always try and just temper my expectations because sometimes no matter how low I set them, they just seem to disappoint. And, and I, I'm tired of being disappointed by them, but they're, they're, I, I say it's their hero movies. Their villain movies are great. So now to, to piggyback off what you're saying, I know you're not really feeling the S well. I don't know if it's in this article, but, and help me out one sec. Cause of course I'm coming to you next. I think they also said that uh, part of the S world, and I forgot to mention this earlier, that they still going to have the, the black Superman movie by, um, uh, um, What's the what's Pro, the produce? produced by Michael B. Jordan? Uh either him or Tana Hasi Coates. Tana Hasi okay. Coates. Um, well, Tana Hasi Coates is writing for Superman right now. He he said that he was just on uh I think he was on MSNBC or something, and he said it, and then he was like, Oh, I don't know if I was supposed to say that. <laughs> and, then so, and then they asked him about it okay. again. He was like, Well, I already said it, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say it. But he was like, Yeah, I'm working on a Superman thing right now. So Okay. Uh, one sec. How you feeling about Superman Legacy? Uh, James Gunn has been able to take characters, like I said, that a lot, a lot of people know and make people love them. He's been able to take characters who are looked at as horrible people and make people love them. This is a character that's beloved by many people, and you just tell it, you just basically saying, "Hey, just do what you do with everybody else with this." To me, that's like a match made in heaven. It's it, it's it's easy work for him. 
And I really hope he directs it as well. Uh, I'm not the biggest Superman fan. I have, I, I've kind of like changed my tune a little bit over the past couple of years because I've seen like some very good iterations of the character, especially on like Superman and Lois and some of the comics that I've read. But James Gunn at the helm with this, and I think it's time we finally, I, I, I didn't need another origin story. So right. I think it's time we get to see like that gentle, kind hearted Superman. I'm not saying that Henry Cavill wasn't there. I just didn't think we got to see that display as much as we probably would have wanted to see. But bringing out and, and, and starting with this, one of the, you know what I'm saying, the mainstays of DC being Superman, this 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 works, it, especially with James Gunn right now. I, I think it's just like a match made in heaven. Already. I want to see Black I, I, Superman. I, I'm uh, I'm with this too. I mean, I want to see it. It needs to happen. Uh, this is the first full length feature in the new uh, DC universe. I think it should start with Superman. Um, mm -hmm. I would not be mad if we got an origin story again, just a different version. But he said we're not getting that, and we're getting this Kryptonian thing. I'm fine with that. It's different, and I think it'll appeal to a larger crowd. Um, I'm like, I'm Superman is not my favorite either, but I don't have nothing against him. You know, he can't be Goku. I just want to make that known yeah. as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. You know, um, I wish Henry Cavill will come back, but. I, I doubt they don't it. want so, him though. I don't. They don't want him though, right? Man, it, it, I, I'm gonna talk about that towards the end. Uh, but before <laughs> we move on, we got we got 117 people watching right now. Thank you so much, guys. We only have 86 thumbs ups though. Can we please? Can we get at least 100 thumbs up before we move on? Uh, to, well, I'm not gonna hold you guys, but the more the thumbs up, the better. Uh, Larry, what was you gonna say? Uh, did Did he say anything about Wonder Woman and what's going on with that? Uh, we're gonna get there, sir. Okay, we're, we're, we haven't finished the video, you know. All right, my bad. All right, my let's bad. Go, let's uh let's see what's next. Let's see what's next. Premier HBO television series called Lantern. Go television live. Okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called Lanterns. This is a story of a couple of Green Lanterns, John Stewart and Hal Jordan, and we have a few other lanterns peppered in there. But this is really a terrestrial-based TV show, which is almost like True Detective with a couple of Green Lanterns who are space cops watching over precinct Earth. In it, they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the DCU. Next is a big yes, yes, hell, mother effing yes. <laughs> now, when we get to the end of this, I'm going to ask y'all, what is your top two, top three most excited projects in this whole Gods and Monsters part one announcement? But I will be saying this now. Lanterns is up there for me. Top one, top two. <laughs> oh, my God. I cannot wait. What does it say right here? Lanterns. Greg Berlin, he's long in the worst Green Lantern TV series, has been uh, scrapped and gun and Saffron have parted ways with the long time DC series steward. And his place will be a new take on the space cops with power rings. Our vision is for this is very much in the vein of a true detective, Saffron described. It's terrestrial base. It will feature a prominent Lantis heroes, Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. And it's one of the most important shows they have in development. This play is a really big role in leading in the main story we are telling across uh, film and TV. Like I said, I feel like this is the best of both worlds because we get Hal Jordan. So, because it's split down the middle with Green. Some people want Hal Jordan. Some people want uh, John Stewart for obvious reasons. You know, not just because the characters are one's white, one's black. You know, that's fine. So you get the best of both worlds. Green. It's a TV series. I want them to put as much energy in this as they do, like Game of Thrones or House of Dragons or The Last of Us. I think that'd be great. One take. I'm coming to you first. I'm also thinking of the DC animated movie, um, uh, uh, Green Lantern: Emerald Knights. I love that mm -hmm. animated film. It's one of my favorites. The all the short stories of how just different factions across the universe and the galaxy, and how the Green Lantern started. I don't. I don't care where. The, I just want to see this man. Like it, mm -hmm. the, the sky's the limit. And for them to say like they have a discovery which will lead to the bigger DC universe. Like I'm all over this. Like I'm. I'm. I am. I am excited. Not only do I want to see TV shows, I want to see movies too. But this is. This is music to my ears right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one take, how are you feeling about th this Lantern TV show? Yeah, I, I echo everything you pretty much said just then. Because I've been waiting for this series for a while. At one moment, you thought you were going to get Kyle Rayner. At one moment, you thought it was going to be John Stewart. 
But the fact that my two favorite Atlantis are John Stewart and Hal Jordan. So you get both of those in the TV series, which I think works the best because I think you got time to like really go over like the green line, of course, and everything. And I'm not a, not the biggest fan of cops, but like the green levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, I'm just being honest, bro. Green yeah. levels are awesome, bro. Like, yeah. and like yeah. I've read, I've read some really, I've, I've seen some good movies, but I've read some really great Green Lantern comics, okay? He might not necessarily be one of my favorite DC heroes, but some of the comics and storylines that they have with the Green Lantern are just top-tier best work, you know what I'm saying, you're going to read in a comic. So having John Stewart and Howard Jordan in a true detective type style, bro, I keep saying, like, it's a match made in heaven. I, I know it's getting redundant, but, bro, it really is. Like, yeah. It just really works for what's going forward. And, and the overall... Whatever the mystery is, or whatever they find out, connecting to like the overall, you know, big story of the DCU, it it works that they're the people to find it out because they're obviously Batman's world greatest detective, but that's in Gotham. That's where he, you know, that's his home base. They're protecting like the Earth in this whole entire section. So for them to find out what's going on, that's going to affect everybody. It just makes sense for them to be the ones to find everything out. Like I'm telling you, it's going to be a hit. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Who they gonna, who they gonna cast? Yeah, 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 I love it. Uh, uh, Larry, how you feeling about the the Lantern TV show? I'll just say ditto. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay. I mean, who's not looking forward to that? Yeah, you yeah. know. Okay, okay. I mean, I, who's not? I, I love it. I love it. Okay, well, so sort of sweet. I love it. We and we I want to know if they're gonna if they're gonna start selling real real rings that you could buy. Man, you know, man. Man, Not the I plastic so. joints you get out the Cracker Jack box. I'm with the real <laughs> joint. Yeah, you man, know? We, can, we can leave. We can, we can use those. Okay. Well, we <laughs> we we are knocking that one out the park. Home run. I think we that's the most. We all are very excited about that. Uh, next one. Let's go. Let's go. We called the authority. The author largest story of the DCU. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television series called Paradise Law. All right. Um, I don't know nothing about the authority. I'm gonna come to you first yeah. this time, Larry. A movie based I... on a team of a movie based on a team of superheroes with rather extreme methods of protecting the planet. The first originated in the late 1990s under an influential imprint known as Wildstorm, run by artist and now head of DC publishing Jim Lee. One of the things of the DCU is that it's not just a story of heroes and villains, said Gunn. Not every film and TV show is going to be about a good guy versus bad guy and giant things from the sky come and come and good guys win. There are white hats and black hats and gray hats, added Saffron. They're kind of like Jack Nicholson and a few good men. They know that you want them on the wall, or at least they believe that. All right. Uh, Larry, how, how are you feeling about uh, the authority? Uh, so far, how does that sound to you? Does it get you excited at all? And th this is what they look like. I've never heard of them before. Yeah, it sounds cool. I, I mean, I'm not familiar with them too much, so um, but it looks interesting. Sounds cool. It sounds like there are some good ideas. Like it sounds like maybe it's like DC's version of the boys or something, where you have these superheroes that are that are sort of unethical and not necessarily always doing things in the the quote unquote superhero way, you know. It would be it would be fun though because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, you know there's a lot of things in this world if they actually tie it in with current events there's a lot of things in the world going on that people want changed and fixed but they don't you know but to if someone's decided I'm just gonna do it and I don't care how bad it looks it would be kind of dope to see like some of these superheroes going out there and just straight blowing up factories and taking out people who are like environmental pollute you know polluters or you know, going out there and some cop gets off from killing a black dude. So some superhero just basically picks him up and drops him in a volcano or some shit. That would be, that would, that would just be crazy to see stories like that. You're muted, B. My fault. Thank you. Uh, one second. Uh, how you feeling about authority? Are you familiar with them? How you feeling about this movie? Also, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this has to be rated R, uh, but yeah. How you, how you feeling? Yeah. I, I was just going to say that, uh, 
I'm, I, I don't think I'm familiar with him. There's a part of me feel like I saw him in something before, but I'm not quite certain. But yeah, I, I like the gray area. You know what I'm saying? I, I love the great when people are like going to this gray area of like, hey, what, what's what's right and what's wrong about being a hero? Like, how far can you go when it when it comes down to protecting people or you know what I'm saying, looking out for the world? And it's just like, hey, it, it seems like a group of people are just like, man, hey man, I'm tired of all this stuff that's going on. Y'all want to do something about it? We got superpowers. It's like, hey, you're probably gonna tell us what to do. All right, cool, let's go do it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of it's gonna look bad. But at the same time, it's like whether was were the uh, results worth it, you know what I'm saying? So I think that whole concept to me works. And and like like Larry said, it kind of do give me like a uh, a feeling of the boys, except that I feel like these people are actually trying to do good. I kind of feel like the heroes and the boys are only doing it for fortune and fame, and they're just at, mm. at their core terrible. People. I got you. Uh, how I feel about it? I mean, they look cool. Um, I like this character over here, look like Archangel to the left. Yeah. Um, you know, but and they look like a Captain Britain or something that's in the bottom right. This woman here with the blind. Uh look like Nightcrawler <laughs> up there with the black. I don't know. I mean, hey, if you know, sure, why not? I, I, you know, if it, if it's badass, if it's good, you know, I didn't know nothing about Invincible. First episode I saw I fell in love. So hopefully, you know, this could be the same thing. So there you go. Uh the authority. Uh, but Larry. Um, this next one here is something that she was asking about, um, but let's see what they're talking about. Very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is a story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman oh. is the brave... So... Let that play a little longer. Uh, Larry, there you go right there. You was asking about Wonder Woman. It's, uh, here we are, Paradise Lost. The duo described this HBO Max series as a Game of Thrones-style drama set on the all-female island that is Wonder Woman's birthplace, the mascara filled with political intrigue and scheming between power players. It takes place before the events of, excuse me, the Wonder Woman film. So it is a prequel. It is a prequel. Larry. How are you feeling about um, this uh, Paradise uh, Lost? That sounds dope. I'm loving it. The only thing that, that's a little disappointing because wow. it's a prequel, the we're likely not going to get Nubia since we know that her and Wonder Woman were basically created at the same time. So, mm, okay. I mean, but I'm still looking forward. I'm still looking forward to it. Uh, there does seem to be a lot of men getting slaughtered up in that piece. So I hope any <laughs> women don't get any ideas. But... <laughs> Yeah, he got a, a sword to the neck. You, Damn, know. Got <laughs> you know? Yeah. That looks painful. And she is. It does. Yeah. They, okay. are, they are getting taxed. So. Yeah. No. You should have proposed. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> one take. <laughs> how, how are you? Uh, you said you love me. And one take. How, how are you feeling about Paradise Lost, man? I, I like it. Um, I didn't know it was going to. Exactly when it was going to take place. So that, that's that's one thing about it. Um, the way they, the, the other shows that they use to describe what they plan on doing with that, I think that kind of like gets me really on board because it's like a well, Westeros type feel as like far as the politics and I've never, I, no matter how many Wonder Woman comics or stories I've watched or read, they never just fully really get into like the political aspect of that island because I know there has to be a lot, you know, that everybody's not agreeing on everything, but that, that's kind of how it's been portrayed for so long. But there's this, uh, I'm going on, going off a little bit. It's I can't quite remember exactly who it is, or, but there was a group of Amazons that didn't quite agree what was going on in Demoscara, so they left and started their own island really? of uh, warriors. Um, and one of the uh, because I know one of them, her name is Artemis, and she like teams up with like Red Hood later on in the future. So I'm kind of wondering, is this going to be like where that starts off at? Where you have a couple mm -hmm. people disagreeing, and then you have a couple group of uh, Amazons maybe fight, and, and you know they didn't become separated. Then some of them leave and go off because the group that went and left off was a little bit more active than the women on Themyscira, uh, and like they were more involved in the world and whatnot. So I'm kind of wondering what, is that what this going to lead to? Interesting, interesting. I bet uh, you, I, I bet you, all that fighting started off because one of them let Ezra Miller on the island. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> They ain't seen another two dollar super chat. Thank you. Yes! Yes! 
appreciate it. Paradise Lost, Xena Warrior Princess. Yeah, yeah. War I I know you used to watch that back in the day, right? I did watch Xena. You did or did I did. Want to take you too? Yeah, the Xena series was better than a Herc a Hercules series for sure. Right on. That's hard. Let's keep going. Let's keep going of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold. The brave and the bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up. Mm. 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 Yes. Mm. Mm. One take, yes, the Bat family. The brave and the bold, Damian Wayne. How are you feeling, sir? How are you feeling? Listen, you know Batman is my favorite superhero, so that gets me excited. I'm just a, I'm just a bit confused because the first Robin we're seeing is Damian Wayne. That means we've already had Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and Tim Drake. That, and I'm wondering, do we do we address that? Do we talk about that at all? Are we going? Are we gonna talk about Ra's al Ghul? Because we know like uh Damien was off with his mother Talia before coming with him, then like Deathstroke was involved. There is a lot to be had, or unless you're gonna be like, okay, we're not really focusing on any of that, we just gonna focus on the story of this man with his uh this new son. Well, I gonna say new son, but like his son just came into his life, who built up a lot of habits from his grandfather of being an assassin and how you control that. A kid who who knows like to kill and how to kill and is very skilled in it, and your whole method revolves around not killing people. So like, I think that the concept is great. I just I just need to know a little bit more of the details surrounding it. Okay, my my thing is I think we're gonna get it all, man. We're gonna I think we're gonna hmm. they they have to. You have to have Talia. You have to have Raz Agul. You have to have, like you said, uh, um, uh, Deathstroke. Yeah, uh, yeah, Deathstroke. No, you, did you say Deathstroke? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dick, Jason, mm -hmm. and, Tim. And, yeah, Tim, all of them, all of them. Batgirl, okay. Batwoman. Uh, it may be even the Black Batman that was in a robot suit or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I forgot his name. Yeah. I, I even even if the, the it, there will be there will be yeah, there will be established characters. You know. Okay. I, I, I'm I'm with it. I'm I'm with it. I'm I'm one thousand percent. I'm. That'll be crazy. Who's gonna be though? Batman though? That's ben Affleck. Gonna... Larry, yeah, come to you, Larry. How how you feeling? Uh, I who's want gonna ben be Affleck. Who's gonna be Batman? Ben Ben Affleck. Oh, he's coming back. No, I, I'm hoping. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I mean, I'm down for it. I love Ben Affleck as Batman. He was he was probably my favorite Batman. Thank you. Uh, yeah, he's probably my favorite Batman. So how you you excited about this? How you feeling? Yeah, I'm cool with this. I'm not. As, I'm not as excited as as I think you guys are, but I but I'm still excited for it. I'm going to see it. I'm I, I'm going to. I, I will say this: that of all the DC superhero movies that they have messed up, they have messed up Batman movies less. So okay. they have not been perfect, but they have had actually some decent ones. So I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not just going to poo poo them automatically. No poo poo. Okay. Okay. That's cool. No poo. -poo. That's right. No poo poo. Let's keep, let's keep going. <laughs> but this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up is a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who <laughs> uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite. All right, Larry, uh, I'm not too familiar with this character, but he just said Booster Gold, uh, lesser known character created in 86. It's about, like he said, a loser from the future who uses basic future technology to come back to try to be a superhero. Imposter syndrome. Mm. Uh, that's just kind of funny. There's like, yeah, he's a loser. Um, Hi, and before before we before I get your comments, uh, I want to thank Claire Coleman for the four ninety nine super chat. Thank you. Yes! Yes! 
We also have to address a hater in the comments, Miss Cromer Shereen, <laughs> talking about no Ben Affleck. Uh, no, <laughs> ma'am. Yes, Ben Affleck. Don't hate. Don't hate. We love being over here. I'm, I'm just joking. Thank you, Cromer. I'm joking. I'm looking at but, that uh, thumbnail thinking, I'll allow it. <laughs> there you go. Um, Larry, how you That's feeling about sick. Booster Gold? <laughs> uh, um, uh, man. I don't Future know. Man. It seems, it seems like into it, the flash. Of... It seems like something Donald Trump would do. You know, really? <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> like it's like if he had access to the technology, he'd go back. I'm gonna go back and become the president they all love. You know, <laughs> I don't know, true. man. It's it could be funny. It depends on how they do it. When I saw the goofy smile and all, it looks like it's gonna be just sort of slapstick and. And that's cool. It depends. I mean, I don't know. Is this going to be an animated joint or is it going to be live action? No, it's live action. Say? It's live, live action. action. It could be fun. I mean, it could be fun. So I don't okay. know. Okay. Um, where you at one time? Maybe they Man, get an I'm, Army Hammer cool. play, dude. Cool. Bro, I love this. Like, okay. I, like Booster, like, he's not one of my favorite characters, but I like the story of Booster Go. Okay. Just, just, just think about it for a second. It's, you can go, this, take yourself. You can go back in time with all the knowledge that you know right now. Mm-hmm. But do you know how popular, do you know how old you would be? Yeah. He's from the <laughs> future. He's from the future. Just, the, just picture somebody coming from the future with all the technology that they have. But I'm going to be a su- I'm gonna be a superhero. I'm going to yeah. be a star. Everybody going to like me. Bro, I get all the girls. I get all the attention. Yeah. <laughs> bro, it's, it's like the broke dude who got money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I can everything I've always wanted. I okay. love the thought of a Booster Gold series. He gonna be fumbling around, not knowing what he's doing at times. <laughs> oh, Same, man. you you already you already familiar with him, but like yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And like him and Blue Beetle are like are like this, like best friends. Like not yeah. the Blue Beetle that we're getting. Uh, he, he was actually best friends with like the old Blue Beetle, but I'm pretty sure they stick on title those two in some kind of. Way. Do I am ready for this? It is gonna be. It is going to be so good and probably so funny just seeing him fumbling and and just. Oh man, I love it. I absolutely okay. love it. Nice, nice. I love it too. I love it too. Uh, let's see what he got next. So that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're gonna turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents, where Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. And that brings me to all right, damn, I don't know, jumping the gun here. All She's right, a uh, character. one take. When I hear Supergirl, the well, first thing that comes to mind is Superman, Batman, Apocalypse. That's DC mm-hmm. animated film. Because, you know, I'm more in the animated movies and the comics mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where I learned a lot. That, that was one of the better DC films. I think it came out in 2010. How are you feeling about this? Uh, Supergirl, World of Tomorrow, uh, says it takes place from the recent Tom King. Uh, we will see the difference between Superman who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents from time he was an infant versus Supergirl raised on a rock, a trip of a chip off of kryptonite and who watched everyone around her die and be killed in a terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life. Then she comes yes. to Earth. She is much more hardcore and not the Supergirl we're used to. Oh, my goodness. One take. How are you feeling about that? That's so much better than a lot of the stuff. We, I, I hate this. I, don't get me wrong. I love I've seen many iterations of Supergirl, but it's, a lot of times they don't know how to not make her just the the the, the woman version of Superman. Yeah. No, and I haven't read this one yet. I, I, I pre I ordered it the other day before they all sold out. Um, I want to see. I like tragic characters, and and somebody growing up having to constantly see the people around them go like. I, I, don't, I don't like that. You know, I don't know what it is about it, but I just like seeing like what molds people. You know, what I'm I like seeing people go go through something tragic and like come out on the other side. And it seems like she gonna be like a no nonsense type character. It's like no, I, I had to deal with all of this. No, Clark, I wasn't raised on a farm with a, a loving uh, 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 
parents and no, I, I went through a lot of, and now I'm here, so I'm not putting up with a lot of the BS that these humans be doing. I'm taking people out like that. That sounds perfect to me. I just, I just like tragic characters, really. <laughs> all right, all right. I love, love the energy. Uh, Larry, how you feeling about Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow? Sounds cool as long as they don't do it like they did, you know, She Hulk and turn her into some boy crazy <laughs> thought. You know, I just, I, wow. <laughs> I hope they just, I hope they let her be dark and brooding and, and, and maybe a little angry and mm -hmm. lovable at the same time. Okay. You know? Okay. I got you. I like it. I like it. I like maybe it. Maybe like some she's coming to way. earth. Maybe she can so take advantage of some of our good, uh, some of our good therapy. Right on. Right on. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Get some grief counts. And that yeah. brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're going to talk about. A very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway. Larry, Swamp Thing, character hmm. you are into? Or are you excited about that? Something dark, a little horror? You know, it's completely different from Supergirl. How are you feeling? It could be cool. It could be cool. I don't know. I don't know much about Swamp Thing, but um, it sounds it sounds like it might be kind of interesting. You know, I'm curious to see how they're going to tie it into the rest of uh, to the rest of the DCU. So it'll be fun to watch. I'm sure. Okay, one take. Uh, I'm looking for. I'm really looking forward to that one as well. Simply because I watched. I read a few Swamp Thing comics, and they had a series come out a couple of years ago on DC Universe. That actually got cut a little bit because of the budget, so it actually went down from 13 episodes to 10 in the middle of production, so it wasn't able to close like it wanted to. But as far as like the horror elements of Swamp Thing, they really worked. And I actually thought that show was really, really good and it's underrated. A lot of people don't talk about it enough. But like, yeah, I think uh, Swamp Thing is a very interesting character, and I've always wanted to see that horror, you know, that aspect of Swamp Thing brought into like the world. So I like that they're going to do that while still connecting it with the uh, main, the big DCU. Already, <clears throat> yeah, I'm cool with it too. Uh, I like that it, he said horror, um, so that that's interesting. What I know about Swamp Thing is from uh, just Justice League Dark. That's the you know I don't know much about him either, uh, but I do remember seeing him pop up in those animated films, and I liked him. Uh, he was pretty cool, and so I'm I'm I'm, I'm here for that too. So uh, hopefully it'll pan out, but we will see. We will see. Wait, those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I wanna be true to those stories. I wanna be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me. And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Thank you so much. All right, there we go right there. That is the announcement. One take out of everything that we went over. Uh, we got Creature Commandos, a Waller, Super, Superman, Lanterns, The Authority, Paradise Lost, The Brave of the Bowl, Booster Gold, Supergirl, and Swamp Thing. What are your top two, top three that you're most looking forward to? Uh, Waller for show, Booster Gold, and I would say The Lantern. I would say those are my three. And it's crazy because those three series, but and, and, okay. Super, and Superman right out there on the outside of that top three. Okay. Uh, Larry, where you at? What are your top two, top three that you're most looking forward to? Uh, probably my top two would probably Waller and the Lanterns. I want to see those two. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you had to pick a third, if I had to pick a third, I'd probably go with the uh, like Creature Command, something like that. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I myself am looking forward to Lanterns, uh, the Brave and the Bow, and uh, I'm trying to make a quick list real quick so I can have it up. But what? Where would I so hold on? Let's see here. Brave in the Bowl. Uh Lanterns. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say maybe the Superman movie. Hmm. Gets me most excited. Okay. So yeah, well guys, let us know what are you looking forward to the most in this DC slate chapter one from James Gunn and Peter Sass Saffron. 
titled Gods and Monsters. Remember, this is only chapter one, and he said himself that this is only part of chapter one. And so we haven't even know what the rest of chapter one is, and I'm dying to know. Um, I'm pretty say, sure you are too. What's up? Did he say if Peacemaker was safe? Is are, are they coming back? Uh, I yeah. think so. Yeah, uh, Wall is going to take place in between uh, uh, Peacemaker season one and two. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and I had two more articles, but we got we run out of time. Uh, I'm just going to read the title real quick. Uh, DC Studios announcements caused Supergirl boost to go and more to sell out. So it sounds like some people are excited about this. This is from CBR.com, but also we got some people upset about this. James Gunn reportedly upsets one of Brothers executives with the recent DC comments. So in his mm -hmm. announcements this week, he would just come out like, yeah, the previous leadership suck, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Part of that leadership is still there, and uh, they, don't, they didn't really like those comments, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm going to see if there's a quick quote I can find real quick. Uh, there have been quite a few ruffled feathers. Uh, some were not exactly tactful. Describe movie makers are not corporate, uh, unlike other executives either love, either told a company line, express generic and general statements, or, you know, um, yeah, he said that the, the history of DC is pretty messed up. No one was minding the mint. And so he pissed off some people. Uh, <laughs> so, if you wanna, yeah, if you want to. Um, also, it was also some commentary where he was like the background movie was just not releasable. It would have hurt the studio. So that's pretty mm. harsh as well. I don't, I don't so, think he said that, though. I think somebody else said that. Some, I, I, okay. If I'm not mistaken, somebody else said that. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, is that what, bad, huh? Yeah, but uh, I hate to cut it short, guys, but it's the last of us time, and I want to I want to respect everyone's time and all that good stuff. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Movie News Roundup show uh, number 94. I can't wait to get to 100. Again, if you're watching this via live on the replay, uh, there is a link down to everything in the description box below if you want to read uh, at your own leisure. And also, if you would like an audio-only version of the podcast, uh, you can uh, go to the link. It's in the description with buzzsprout.com. It's on all of these uh, platforms right here, uh, as well as SoundCloud. So there you go right there. I want to thank my guests so much for uh, coming in today. Uh, one Take Big Dog, man. Thank you, bro. I really appreciate it. Follow this man on social media, on um, Twitter. Instagram, Facebook, I don't know. Just follow him on social media. His handle on the screen. Uh, here's his YouTube channel right here. You got anything you want to announce to the good people out there? Or, you know, what you got going on or what's up? Uh, I, I'm, I really ain't got nothing going on right now. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm just, okay. I'm, just, I'm just chilling right now. Well, still, subscribe to his channel anyway because he's uh, he's amazing. And uh, and thank you, one take, big dog. Uh, Larry, what you got going on on your channel, sir? Uh, more tech stuff, man. I just... Um... You know, I just got the iPad mini sixth generation. It's not a, you know, it's not like this is a brand new device. It's been out for about a year or so, but I just got one. I just released my uh, my unboxing and first impressions video earlier today. So you can go check that out. That's up on the channel. And I'll probably be doing some reviews and some tips and stuff with it. So, uh, yeah, that's about it, man. Just lots of stuff I need to review and get out. Just got to get the time together to, to do it. I definitely feel you on that. And again, guys, if you want to check out uh, my You People review, uh, you can. Um, you know, I enjoyed the film. You know, here's my review right here. Real quick, one take, Big Dog, in five seconds. Did you like Knock at the Cabin? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. I did too. And uh, thank you, Mama Avery, uh, for the lovely comment. I, I love you so much and mm -hmm. I do appreciate you. Larry, she told me to say she'd been popping up in your show and you uh she didn't know if you noticed or not, but uh you know oh she, man she checks I'm gonna look out for her now. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. look for her now. <laughs> I might just I might have to send her a link so she can come on. That'll work. Oh my, oh my goodness, <laughs> I just realized what you said. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that I'm B Avery. That's one take big dog, and that's Larry Killmonger, and that's just our opinion. Peace out. Enjoy The Last of Us Episode 4. We'll see you next time.